Yeah. That's the best way I can theorize this at this point, because I've yeah. seen this multiple times over the years. And that's like the pattern. You're never stuck. You just have to choose to learn. Today, I'd like to welcome a very special guest, Amy Bileski. Amy, welcome to the show today. Welcome and thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to talk to you. I've been following you on TikTok for at least over a year now, and I love all the things that you talk about, you. especially when you talk about talking to spirits. So I just want to dive right in. I'm really curious if this mediumship has been a part of your life forever, or if it was revealed to you and how that all worked out and how you dealt with that. No. So <clears throat> it's been for forever or as long as I can remember. Right. So I talk about this on live a lot or, or even there, you know, I had uh, cancer when I was five, I lost part of my kidney or my kidney. Um, and then part of my liver and some of my intestines and that, that surgery, cause it was already stage three. Um, it was the size of a basketball inside of a five-year-old child. And so they went through and they removed that. And that caused me essentially to have my first near death experience because of how vascular the tumor was, there was bleeding out, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, and you know, I really didn't know what was going on. I just knew that I was in the hospital for like six months and, um, got out and I can remember certain things like seeing like a hooded cloaked figure coming down the hallway into my room, which was weird. And my mom even saw it odd things like that. Or um, I talked about seeing at what time I could only describe as like a guardian angel, um, which was like a glowing woman, essentially, that was smaller. Like I, it was in the corner of my room with like long, blonde, flowy hair. Like that was that, and like a turquoise blue dress. Um, and then from there, I remember growing up and nobody is a medium in my family. Um, we found out later on that my great grandmother was over in Russia, but I mean, she was born in 1888, so I never met her. Right. Um, and we only found that out because of her memoirs that we found that were translated into English. But um, growing up, I, I saw stuff and I would ask my mom about it. I asked my dad about it. Like, can you um, hear people's thoughts like what they're going to get and then it comes true or can you see you know your grandfather normally no oh okay you know so I didn't really have any mirror to look back on so I just kind of or or what going out into the backyard I remember I lived in Houston Texas it was hot all the time right but I remember being able to feel when the season was going to change. That's a very odd thing. I specifically remember standing outside and being like, winter is about to be here. And I'm like six, like you don't even watch the news, right? But I remember being so excited because I knew Christmas was going to be here in like a month. And sure enough, it was like a cold front would come in and I'm like, look at this, right? Um, and then it, they never shut it down. But nobody was ever going, oh, my God, can you tell me about your near death experience or like probing for information? Because my dad had a double master's degree and he owned his own business in hospital administration and getting doctors. And then my my mom was um, a trigonometry professor um, at a big university in Texas. So, like, I had these big shoes to fill. Right. Essentially, at the same time. Um, but then as I got older, it just kind of kept coming and coming and coming again um and yeah and now we're here and there's way more that goes into that but yeah. it wasn't it was revealed I had to figure it out let's just say mm -hmm. that yeah I just had to figure it out yeah so these gifts this sensitivity this ability yeah. to uh -huh. see or sense things has has been with you for pretty much your whole life. And after yeah. your first near death experience, yeah. how did you figure it out for yourself? Like, what did you do to understand what was actually happening? Well, there are no real books out there, right? So I still have the first book I ever bought. I was in seventh grade. And this is back, you know, I'm born in 88. Okay. You're born in 79. So we're in that time period where there was no internet to like, look at this. And, right. and everybody at, at that point was going on like Oprah Winfrey show. And they're like, you, 
you know, oh, you talk to dead people. Ha 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 ha. She thinks she does this, right? They're really, we're, we're really still in the mockery phase of what this is, right? As humanity. And so you can't go and openly ask things. Um, and so I bought this book that was called Communicating with Spirit for Dummies. Remember the Dummies series back then? The Yeah. So I bought that and I read it in seventh grade and I was like, okay, I don't understand the spirit guide shit. And I was like, I get the vision things that they're talking about. Okay. Odd. But how do you control it like how do you make it happen and why does it happen um and so after reading that i kind of freaked myself out and i kind of put it away and then the thing that ended up bringing it back up was i was in eighth grade and um you know you remember how you used to go to the skate rink i don't know if you used to do that but the well, skate rink all the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> we roll hard at the skate rink okay casey and jojo was playing at the skate rink that i was in it was the whole yeah, thing back then and <laughs> and i remember going there and I saw in in a dream the night before there was this guy and I met him and his name was Alvin and I saw him and I knew that he was going to come up and ask my best friend at the time, Tasha, to like essentially go on a date. Like, you know how you used to do, you want to hold hands and skate, like that type of thing. And I remember telling Tasha, I was like, there's going to be this guy that is going to come up and he's going to ask you. And she was like, I, no, Amy, no, he came up. I freaked out. I saw him. I saw him in my dream. And I'm like, and I went home and I told my mom and I cried. I was like, I don't know what this is. She's like, I don't know what this is either. Oh my God. Right. Um, and then from there, I just, I really wanted to figure out more. Right. I never looked at anybody else. I never asked anybody else their experience because I knew it would be different than my own. And so I essentially went like mad scientist and I wanted to figure out how they talked, how it worked, like, because there's so many different facets that go with this, right? It's not just like somebody coming up and saying, hi, I'm grandma. Like they talk in a million different ways, right? Yeah, um, yeah it's it's wild and it just keeps getting more. I, I predicted my really good friend Jason's passing um, this was in my sophomore year of high school. He, I predicted that because I saw it, I felt it, that he was going to get into a car accident. And I remember feeling myself getting thrown out of the vehicle. And I told him, I said, be really, really careful. He worked at Chick-fil-A at the time. He was three years older than me. We had this group of guys we'd hang out with because I was in a, a rock band. And um, he was coming out of Chick-fil-A. Um, my other friend Tyler was driving and it was coming on an access road that was leading off of a highway and an 18 wheeler came and sideswiped him and he got catapulted out of the front from the passenger side and it ran over him and he died. And that was another experience. It was weird. Yeah. At like 14. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That sounds like really intense and yeah. you mentioned feelings like you felt like you were being thrown out of a car um mm -hmm. you also mentioned how part of your journey was like learning how to understand that so mm -hmm. that leads to what i've wanted to ask you for a while is how do spirits talk to you Okay, so you probably have experienced this as well. And so I always say this at the beginning of all of my sessions. So one of the things is when you go into a session, most people have never spoken to a medium. Most people have never spoken to a medium logically. I guess you'd mm -hmm. say it's always like, ooh, right? Well, it's not ooh, it's just part of your normal daily life. Okay, so whenever spirits talk, um, the best way you can I can describe it is, number one, you have to get into a state where you are only here now. So I'm not thinking about anything else. There's nothing else going on. My brain is essentially blank. And then I have, or actually my session right now. So I actually have this and then I just start, oh, look, uh -huh. I just start scribbling, right? Why everybody goes, why do you scribble? Well, because what it does is it allows my focus while well, my brain is gazing off and staring at the stupid light and allows me to kind of just like not focus on anything else. And honestly, I get into kind of like a rhythm or a pattern, almost like getting into this meditative zoned out state. And then from there, what happens is I'm really feeling, I don't know what trigger it is in the brain. I don't know what medical words to use because I'm not a doctor or anything, but essentially it's like you're getting into the state of being where only now exists and you're getting hypersensitive and hyper aware of what is going on around you. And you're asking for this to come in. Asking is really key. So you're, if you're like, oh, who is around here? And 
it's going to feel like the room that you're in is empty and all of a sudden it feels like there's something there. Like almost like if you were a little kid and you were coloring on the floor and you didn't hear your mom walked in, but you felt that she was in. So you turned around like that feeling. Okay. Yeah. So that's what a spirit feels like. <laughs> um, and then you go in and you essentially, you have to ask them to show up. What they do is they hop in your body. They play with your brain. They are electricity. They are energy. Your brain is a computer. Essentially they're tickling your brain. Um, and then what they do is they talk in signs and symbols. So maybe I may see really quickly pop, pop, a pineapple. What does that mean? Pineapple for me doesn't always mean they like pineapple. For me, that means that they're from Florida. Okay. So now they'll put pineapple chocolate lab um, boat. Oh, well, so this guy would um, ride or this, what this would mean for me is like, oh, he rode on a boat from Cuba to Florida because chocolate lab is Cuba because I channeled a dog named Cuba a long time ago. That was a chocolate lab. Okay. Don't ask me why. So, and they'd be like, holy shit. Yes. Um, yeah. The next thing is that they talk in only feelings. Um, this is 90% of the way that spirits communicate. So I, and, and all of us get this constantly. We get this and we go, oh, it's my feeling. No, it's not your feeling. It's fucking spirit. That's what it is. Okay. So all, how they talk is like, let's say you use the word love, right? Oh, love is great, but it's very flat. I want you to feel what love feels like for a second. Everybody's going to stop and feel like what love feels like. Okay. And then now from there, I want you to remember what it feels like for the love to your mother versus the love to your father versus the love to a dog. So they make me feel that feeling. And I go, oh, there's a person here that's your father and he loves you a lot, right? So I'm essentially translating the feeling into words. OK, and then the last two ways are that they will try to put me like almost like in a daydream state very quick. I mean, but in that moment, it feels like it's an hour. It's odd because time doesn't exist in spirit world. And so they put me in a moment and they make me re-see, re-feel or re-experience something happened to them or something happened to my client or something that will happen. So maybe they show me a flash like last night um, I was on live and they showed me a flash of gloves on two like a two handlebars like a bike they made me smell diesel and they made me see dirt on a really deep treaded tire and then they made me feel boy less than 19 that's all i saw in a half a second and i was like is there somebody here like i said it almost feels like a mom or like a stepmom that lost a child definitely it's a son i said they died in like an atv accident or they died in like a bike uh, dirt bike accident, one or the other. And this woman, and I was like, they're definitely like between like 15 and 19. Um, but they're really tall. She says, I lost my son at 15. Um, he was six foot three. He died in a, um, motocross accident. Um, and I was like, what is, why is he here today? Like what is going on? She was like, I've never been on your live and tomorrow is his birthday. And I said, what's going on with his dad? I said, why is he talking about being by his side? Obviously they're by his side. I said, but it's more important to that. Like he's ushering him. She goes, oh, we just got a diagnosis last week that he has less than six months to live because of pancreatic cancer. So she happened to be on my live last night. He came through to try to tell his dad that when he's dying, that he'll be there for him. Okay. Very random. Right. Okay. Or is so, it random? Yeah. It, no, none of it's random. Everybody goes, oh my God, it's a coincidence. No, it's not. No. Um, but that is that is how they talk. And then the last one is words. Sometimes I get spirit that just sounds like I'm on the phone with them. Like I have a Bluetooth speaker in and I will just like hear words in my head. But most of the time it's all four of them and they conglomeratize together. And then I have to like in like half a second and give it to you. Yeah, that's fascinating. I love how it's a combination of different ways, like feelings, um, pictures, words. And so I get this question a lot. I've had this question for myself. Do you have to actually have a specific gift to learn how to talk to spirits? Or is this something that everyone can learn how to communicate like it sounds like they're using a language like can yeah. everyone learn that language well yeah because you're a spirit in a body yes yeah. you're a spirit in a meat sack you're animating a corpse right now and you are not your body that's your costume and so you're essentially learning the language of what you were before you forgot yourself when mm -hmm. you came here yeah that's it 
That's a fantastic oh. answer. <laughs> we are mm-hmm. spirits in a body. So of course we can communicate mm-hmm. with other spirits. Now, this leads me to a curiosity that I've had. And I'm really curious to hear your perspective on this because like you were saying, when you were starting to get curious in research, it wasn't really mainstream. It was kind of like taboo to be a okay. psychic or a medium. Yeah. Can you, from your perspective, can you share with us the differences between what it means to be a psychic or to be a medium or to channel? Okay. So you may like this answer and you may not like it. So I choose, I will tell you my best understanding of it, but I choose to not dive and put my energy and focus on something that doesn't surround my being right so um just because i've learned i've learned that you know i've learned that so um the best way that i can describe is when you are a medium you are the telephone and the receiver between these two energies so person in a body spirit here you are the middle you are the radio and the loudspeaker okay Mm -hmm. but your client is the energy channeling same thing Okay. But now usually instead of just having a person you're connected to, you're just channeling. That's what channeled messages are. And I like that, but I also have to say, it's really hard for me out there right now because I, I see so much just shit, just crap, just people saying, I'm getting a channeled message that your husband isn't going to love you in 10 years. And I'm like, this is for me, I don't know, maybe I feel very strongly about this. Like, this is your highest self. You're channeling like something essentially that's holy, right? And now you're just making a joke about it so that you can get five pennies on live. Like for me, my God, fuck off. Essentially, go and do some work yourself, right? And then mm-hmm. come back. Like, and and that message wouldn't do anything good for that person sitting there and and like that's oh my god you know it's that's a whole nother level but yes there are some people that can channel messages but you also have to remember that humans are egotistical especially in this life and we feel like as soon as we turn it on that that spirit is going to come through and people go oh just do it right now you know channel that message give me it well you're at the mercy of if they want to talk Okay, so these people that just say I channel a message automatically and here it is, it doesn't always work that way. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so yes, you can tap into it. Absolutely. But they don't always want to talk to you. I just so happen to be that I always get people right and I tell my client to prepare and like it's great, right? And it works. But the whole like original channeled message, sometimes Abraham doesn't want to talk. Right. It's okay. Sometimes you don't sometimes they're not going to tell you anything. And then at that point, what they're just making it up, Mm -hmm. you know, or reaching back into what like a pastor would do at a sermon, right? Like recall or recount. Um, And so I don't know, I'm really into authenticity. Um, The other thing too is psychic. I guess psychic and medium can kind of come into the same play. Um, Me essentially, especially if I do near future or if, um, we go over into a a living relation, like talking about somebody else, that's still spirit. Mm -hmm. You're not really being a psychic. Who's giving you that insight? A spirit is giving you an insight. So essentially that is also a medium and a right. Um, You just don't really know that you're communicating with them. You just think that it's you and you're getting the messages. Well, you are, but who's giving it to you? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, And I think a lot of times with psychics as well, they bring about things that spirit isn't interested in. You know, what do I mean by that? Like like people always go, what are the winning lottery numbers? Well, that's the ego. That's a money. That's a lower vibrational thing, right? Spirit's not going to tell you that because it has nothing to do with that. That's a want and a need that is of a flesh desire. Mm -hmm. Right. And if it's meant to happen, it will happen. Okay. Um, And so, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really met. I've met more mediums than I ever have psychics. I think Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people in the psychic area that are playing around and they're not really connecting. I don't know. I also think that there's a lot of people that just want to, they've lost hope and they just want to believe in anything. And so they fall prey to the people that just do that as well. And that's Mm -hmm. sad. 
because there's so much better out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. And the way that you articulated how a lot of people will ask for the lotto numbers or am I going to get married or, you know, things that are really surface like level. And I would love to hear from your experience. Um, I know you've done a lot of readings and I have seen you live. I actually was on your live last night when I saw that. that. (laughs) Yeah, that was really cool. Um, That was cool. What kinds of messages or benefits do uh, the sitters or the person like getting the reading, the person that comes to you for a reading, what kind of uh, benefits do they get from getting a reading? Okay. So one of the things that everybody says is our, uh, we've kind of been in the social media world and like the regular world, people have been programmed to think, oh my God, there's a message for me. It's not always a message. Like there's not always right. a fucking message. There's not. Sometimes it's just, they want to let you know that they're there. Sometimes the message is, is that ye of little faith have to realize that there's more and you have to trust the process, right? Like that's what they want you to know. And so like last night, um, I I had a session with a woman. She bought a, a session for her mother um, for her birthday. And the mom didn't realize she had a session until she turned on the camera. Okay. And it was her 70th birthday. And the mom was like, I've always wanted to do this, but you know, I've never had the balls to essentially or anything like that. And my, I'm so glad my daughter bought it for me, but she was in shock. Okay. And she was also a big skeptic, which is fine. That's great. Right. I'm also kind of a skeptic all the time. Um, but as I go through and I begin channeling her father comes through, which had crossed over the other side. She had taken care of him. Wonderful. But he was just going around and talking about her life. He was talking about how they, um, he said going out to dinner and I was like, okay, so y'all are going out to dinner or something. She goes, Oh, we just finished dinner. I said, okay. And then he made me taste chips and salsa, like bite of a chip. And so I said, did you have chips and salsa? And they laugh and they go, yeah, we just had Mexican food. We had chips and salsa. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, he was there with you, right? Um, And so you could just see her face just like light up, right? Because she knows that he's around. She knows he's not gone. They talked about, he went through and he showed me this really big bulbous, like if you could see somebody's knee and if it had an, an accident and it's just swollen, like for the little leg is down here. And I said, what is going on with like somebody on the left leg? having this really swollen bulbous left knee. I said, we're really, really like sad about this injury. And I was thinking of his mom. She goes, I don't have it. She goes, oh, my daughter. And she goes and she shows me her leg and she's a professional runner and she fell and she essentially like shattered her kneecap like last week. And so she has this huge injury and she's not going to be able to run again, essentially. And so he's coming through and he's telling her like, that's going to be okay. You're going to find other things. And he talked about her getting into CrossFit. And she said this week she started setting up her gym for CrossFit. Like that's what she wants to go into instead. And I was like, oh, well, there's a confirmation. And that's where you need to go with, right? Um, and so what what would you get out of that? Number one, you know that you're not alone. Number two, you know that they're still with you. Number three, you can walk with a confidence moving forward that it's not just you, right? right? That you have them there as like this, essentially like the safety net, right? You're being held together. So I don't know what would be a better feeling than that, right? Yeah. So that's just why. the extension of knowing that the energy continues beyond the body. I just yeah. feel like is so magical. I have a couple more curiosities. I know we're getting Amazing. short on time, but uh, so my my first one is you had when you were describing how you talk to spirits, you had mentioned. Yeah. Uh, you know, scribbling and kind of getting into a zone. I know that there are so many ways that spirit tells you that you're around. So for someone who is not a medium or not interested in communicating, how can they tell that their loved ones are still in fact around them? Well, you said part of it yourself. If they are not interested in communicating, they will not get communication. Okay. So if they do not want it, it will not happen. Mm -hmm. So many people go, I don't believe in it. I hate it. I don't like it. I'm scared of it. I'm this. Guess what? You're not going to feel it. 
Why? Because wherever you shift your focus on, that's where it will grow. Yeah. Okay. So first off, first thing is not have any fear. Okay. Why? Because it's just you. You're essentially looking at yourself in the mirror. Boop, boop. That's it. Um, so don't have any fear on it. What Hollywood displays everything as is absolute horseshit. Now there is a lower vibration. There is some pretty dark shit that exists. We can go into that later, but, but I don't go there. Um, but if you, with your loved ones, ask them for a sign and don't just do the generic. Oh my God, I want a coin. I want a feather. I want a butterfly. I live in East Texas. Like there's 50 million butterflies everywhere. Not every single one of them is my dad. Okay, stop it. So, but what you do is you ask for something. So you take a moment, you take a deep breath, um, you get into a quiet space. Why? Because you can have focus and you sit there and you call on your loved ones. So you would say like dad or mom, can you please come in here and be with me? Yes, you can talk to them in your head. You don't have to say it out loud. Um, and you sit there for about a minute to two minutes and you just remember some really good memories you had of them. Um, put yourself in that space, in that memory. And then what you do is, this is my favorite thing, is you ask for like a random sign. So something you wouldn't see. So I would say, start off easy, start off with like a purple heart and envision that purple heart in your mind and say, mom or dad, I want to see this purple heart in my world in the next 48 hours. And I know that you're with me. Don't come at it an ego, come at it with like, and I'll know you're with me, just like in this neutral state. And then write it down, tell your friend, tell your, tell your, whoever it is, and then let it go. And then watch that stupid purple heart will show up in your world in the next 48 hours. You'll probably shit a brick um, and then you'll cry uh, and then you do it all over again, but you change the symbol. And that is one of the ways that you know, because they manipulate your reality, your vision, your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions to show you that they're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I love how you said that if you don't want to communicate um, or you're scared, like, don't worry, because it is all about, you know, our desires and our intentions. And so yeah. if we're wanting that communication, we can count on it. And if we're too afraid, it's okay. Because my understanding is that spirit doesn't want to actually scare us. <laughs> no, no, never, yeah. never. And, and people think that, oh my oh God, this is the thing that I, I dislike the most is when people go, oh my God, it's a demon. Why would a demon pretend to be your grandmother and tell you they were there for your 27th birthday? An all-powerful negative entity is going to tell you what flavor cupcake you ate. Oh, evil. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So. I just, though, you know, I, so before we pressed record, I shared with you a little bit about my journey and how yeah. I discovered some of my gifts and um, the way I was raised, there was a lot of fear around yeah. certain things like that. So just the way you said that was just so powerful to me, like an evil, all powerful entity, if they even exist, they're not going to waste their time with pretending to be, you know, it's someone and showing really sentimental, like very dearly connected things like yes. they do in reading. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. They're not going to come up and be like, and you had chocolate sprinkles. Whoa. Like that, <laughs> that is not a thing. And the best way I can describe right. with like, I call them lower vibrational things. There are, mm -hmm. there's higher heavenly God source, whatever you want to call it, all of that. Um, there, there's the opposite spectrum, but think of, that type of stuff works just the same here as in physical reality. Yeah. If you are a very happy, bubbly, positive, nice person, you walk into a room with a hundred people. Well, you're not the the goths that are negative and singing, you know, cut my wrist and black my eyes are probably not going to want to come and hang out with you. Right. <laughs> right. You're going to go with somebody that is in that same bubbly, bright, neutral personality. It's the same thing with spirit. Um, all dark, heavy, negative entities. They're not on your same level. They're not on your same vibe. They don't want to have anything to do with you because you have nothing to do with them. Yeah. Thank you right. so much for that visual. It's like the universal law, like attracts yeah. like. So yes. we're not going to attract something that's totally not like our vibration. So yes. we can rest in that safety. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. And the whole yeah. thing was like people going, okay, you have to have this protective light and power around you. You're always protected. You're always protected. Let's mm -hmm. say it again. You're always protected. Like yeah. you don't yeah. have to do that. It's okay. We're always protected. Now I'm curious because I know I've watched a lot of your videos on TikTok and yeah. I can see that sometimes when spirit validates something, 
sometimes you're shocked, sometimes they're shocked. I'm curious, yeah. do you have anyone who's still skeptical after they have a reading with you? Um, I have once had a session, her sister passed tragically. Um, her husband and her got into a fight and she talked about like dying in a motor vehicle accident, but how it was a murder, not a suicide. And I said, did your sister die in like a motor vehicle accident? I said, but how is a motor vehicle accident uh, an unaliving? Sorry, I don't know if which one will they like on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. Unaliving rather than like an accident. She goes, oh my God. She goes, you just confirmed something with me. I said, what? She goes, he said that he didn't push her out of the car. They were in a fight. They were drunk. They were going like 70 miles on the highway and they literally were fighting and he opened the door and he shoved her out of the car and the car ran over on the highway. And at the very end of it, um, her, this was like two years ago, the sister was amazing at giving validations and they emailed me and they asked me if I look stuff on, up online, if I had read any court documents because nobody could know that. And I'm like, I don't even have a chance to like make tea half the time, <laughs> let alone go searching for anything and then download programs and pay for all the services, you know, like that doesn't right, make any right. sense. So, um, and then after like sitting there and having a conversation, they were like, wow, it was just, they had never experienced anything like that. Right. And they were from a really small country town in Louisiana, right. Mm -hmm. Where everything that is not going along with Baptist is, is evil. Right. So then having this experience is just like, oh my God, well, it has to be fake. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. but now, I mean, I have people, it's so interesting you know, with the following that I have and, and what I do and how many hours of content and reviews and everything like that. It's like when people come up and they go, oh, my God, uh, you're not real. I was like, well, I assure you right now. Yes, I am real. But um, I can also tell you that this is very, very real. And I have the, you know, 10,000 hours of proof. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. now I, I don't really I don't know. Yeah. Think about it anymore. I just go here. Please go read this book and then come back and talk to me. You yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I just I love watching your videos and seeing the the specific validation and how yeah. it impacts other people and just what's revealed from just those subtle little things. So mm -hmm. thank you so mm -hmm. much for that. I know we're getting close oh. on time. Is there anything that you would like to share or bring to light around um, mediumship or channeling or the afterlife or okay. whatever. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, from unbiased popular opinion, um, and this is just, okay. Remember everything that I say and I talk about is not, I have actually only read that one book on mediumship before. I've okay. never read anything else. All right. I don't read books. I don't do anything like that. Why? Because it would, um, tamper my experience and my viewpoint. And I may start thinking about something else and it wouldn't be my truth, right? It'd be somebody else's truth. Um, anyways, there is a higher vibrational place like heaven. There is a middle and there is a low. There is that. And all of it is surrounded by love, right? So it's within this bubble of love, God, source, whatever you want to call it. Um, and each one of these stages has its, I guess you'd say, reason for it, right? Lower, I have channeled people that are in this lower state. There's a lot of the people that um, were very heavily in essay, so sexual assault, um, people that murdered others, people that were, um, I mean, I had a guy that I channeled one day, his, I thought it was his wife at first, and then I'm just going to do a very dark story. Are you ready for this? Okay. Okay. So um, I had a session with a woman. I can't remember the guy's name she wanted to bring through, but I remember I, br I brought him through. He wasn't in the middle. He wasn't in the upper. He was low and he was heavy. And so what it looks like in my brain is there's a guy walking around and it's every feeling of like narcissism anger and like what are you doing essentially somebody that's very huffy puffy and having a temper tantrum essentially but it's in an all dark room and it looks like there's like one single light shining down that's essentially what it is that's what the dark looks like to me and um but he can't touch me he can't do anything to me it's almost like i'm in a bubble 
which is weird. It's the best way I can describe it. And so I asked him, I said, what happened? And he said, oh, this is my itch. This is my slut. And I was like, I'm sitting here and I look at her. I go, I said, you're not his wife. And I said, he just said that you're like his slut. And I told her and she goes, I go, is that like, what does that mean? She goes, no, I was having an affair with him. He was married. I was his mistress. Okay. And he's, she was 25 years younger than him. Okay. Wow. So I go through and I channel him and he is like, it's weird. It's like something out of a nightmare, kind of a little bit. Um, he's walking around. He has like this stained um, medium color blue shirt on. He has like these ruddy red stains all over it. Um, and he has a short sleeve shirt on. He's like kind of scruffy. He's a white guy. He has like shorter disheveled hair with like all these like weird brown, brown spots all over him, essentially from like dirt or something. And he's like, I don't know where the boys are. They're fine. They don't want to come hang out with their father. And all of a sudden he puts me in a backyard. He makes me feel tall grass, like up to my knees. And then he made me see a shotgun. That was it. And he made me see like something I would see driving through a country, like the country, like a little um, corrugated iron metal shed or something like that. I said, I don't know what's up with a shotgun, a shed, tall grass. And he keeps talking about these boys. And she says, oh, he murdered his two sons in a back shed with, and then turned the gun on himself. Wow. Uh -huh. Because his wife found out he was having an affair with her and told him that she was going to take the kids. He got drunk, came home, and killed both the kids and himself. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he had no remorse. He was just wondering why the boys weren't with him because he was a good father. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So he so, did know yeah. the boys, uh -huh. but he was alone in this low vibration. His boys yes. weren't with him. Yeah. They were in a higher vibration. Wow. They were in heaven because they were six and seven. Yeah. And he did that to him. And um, he was kind of like in this dark space. So what's the whole point? He has to realize he has to do self-reflection. He yeah. has to understand what he did, how he hurt not only the kids, but the people around him, how that one drop rippled out. And then he has to align himself with light and God and love and find that. But he's in a very deep state. And when he does that, he moves up. When he moves up to the middle, probably he's going to end up being somebody's guide or he's going to end up like helping his ex-wife. He's going to have to do these good things in life to bring up his vibration. And then when he realizes that he's the light and he helps out his wife and his wife probably comes because she's going to be the one he hurt the most. She comes over. She will probably end up practicing forgiveness through that. And then they will ascend into what they call a higher vibrational state. Yeah, that's the best way I can theorize this at this point, because I've yeah. seen this multiple times over the years. And that's like the pattern. You're never stuck. You just have to choose to learn. Yeah, I yeah. love that visual and that little journey. Uh, I have interviewed quite a few near death experiencers mm -hmm. and past life regressionists. And like the journey you just described sounds like, you know, the really? same that like, even though you know, if there is a lower vibration place or a middle vibration place and you yeah. don't just get to heaven, it's all part of the the soul's journey. It is. Yeah. Yes. And it's all surrounded by that love. So you're not lost. It's yeah. just part of your journey back up into essentially yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's so fascinating. Yeah. Gosh, I could talk yeah. about this stuff forever. Um, no. I do have three questions that yeah, I anything. ask all my guests. So I want to make sure okay. we get those in before we have to end. Okay. Uh, so the first question is, how do you define God? All right. So it's abstract. Um, so I talk about that you know, a lot on live or in videos, you know, mm -hmm. people tend to think when I use the term God, I'm talking about a guy with a beard and a cloud pointing his finger, you know, on another cloud. And that's not God is not a man was never a man was never physical to think that way is an egotistical thing in itself. And that is not God. So God is with, within you. Um, it is you. It runs through everything. You are 
attached and tied to everything in your reality, everything is God. Everything is an expression of you. Everybody else, including you, is me. You are God. But am I creating you? Or are you? Yeah. Oh, that's a whole nother world. That's called right. Mindfuck Mondays. We'll have another thing. But yeah, every yeah, everything is God. And, and you can make you can make anything happen. You can make anything. You can make anything happen if you just believe you can. It sounds like a Disney story, but it's true. Yeah. It's true. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I love God. your definition. It reminds me of what we were talking before we pressed record in the spider web. So yeah. maybe we'll have a follow up conversation. Yeah. Too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me know. Yeah. Okay. The second question is, what would you say is the purpose of life on earth? To live. That's it. Just to live and to love and to enjoy it. We take things way too seriously. Yes, there are serious things, but those are lessons we got to learn. And then we move forward and we can't hang out back there. It's just an experience. We're on the stage of life. We get dressed, we do the play, and then we go back and we change our costume and we come back out again. Awesome. Yeah, that's it. That's life. Yeah. Done. Uh, Maybe it's too simple, <laughs> but that's how I feel. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think we're really simple and we actually complicate it. Oh, absolutely. Than yeah. necessary. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the final question is if you could take one piece of wisdom, that you have now and offer it to a younger version of yourself, what would that one piece of wisdom be? God, I think about this every day, honestly. Um, I don't know if it's a wisdom, be more of a phrase, don't give up. <laughs> that would be the first one is don't give up. Um, the other thing would be uh, trust your intuition more like realize that yeah what you're thinking what you're getting that's real trust your intuition more um yeah that would be my piece of wisdom awesome thank you so yeah. much what would and, you give yours um yeah relax mm -hmm. <laughs> relax just yeah. breathe relax yes. trust yourself <laughs> yeah yeah and Same. and don't give up um mm -hmm. you are worthy of having what you want. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And don't fall into the hands of, I guess you'd say, people that don't appreciate you for who you are. Yeah. And get rid of them earlier. Yeah. Chuck it in the bucket bucket. Yes. Surround yourself with people who co-sign your dreams. <laughs> Absolutely. I yeah. love that. I'm right there with you on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do people find you? How do they get in touch with you? How do they work with you? Okay, so um, all of my stuff, you can find me on TikTok, obviously, it's The Bolesky, um, T-H-E-B-A-L-E-S-K-Y. I do have my website, um, it's The Bolesky Experience. Um, dot com. You can just Google Bolesky and it all just shows up. It's all there. Um, if you want to have a chance to work or have a session, remember everything is on my website as well. And everything is linked on every single one of my social media profiles from Instagram to Facebook to Twitter. It's all the same name across the board. Yeah. I'll be sure to include all that information in the description okay. of okay. this so that all the listeners who feel led to work with you or reach out to you can do that. Um, thank you so much again for everything you're doing. I love what you're doing on TikTok. I love the fact that you're bringing your gifts to the world to help wake us all up. Yeah. And we everybody needs to learn it too. That's the whole yes. thing. People go... People go, oh my God, well, I can't do it. Why can't you do it? Shut up, just do it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amy. This has been such a pleasure and yeah, just so grateful. It was such an honor to have you I here know. today. Thank you. Yeah, and if you want me back, let me know. I'll have to find the time, but we can yeah. figure it out. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Stay tuned for that. I would like to personally thank you for tuning in to this episode. If you haven't already, please be sure to like this episode subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you never miss a beat. And if you really resonated with this content, please share it with all of your friends so that collectively we can expand our consciousness. Have a very blessed week.